Hi friends, welcome to the Friends of France podcast. In this safe space, we are favored in each episode with the presence of an expert guest from different fields and specialties as we learn about their life journeys, their successes, possible regrets, and realizations, their work, why they do what they do, and even their life outside of work. In here, we tear down common myths and misinformation with up-to-date, evidence-based science and data simplified for anyone to digest. We don't shy away from topics that can sometimes be polarizing or taboo. We normalize the humanization of healthcare and its workers and we promote the importance of self-care and safeguarding your mental health. Please keep in mind that the conversations in this podcast are for educational and informational purposes only. They are not implied or intended to be a substitute for professional medical diagnosis, advice, or treatment. Please always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare providers regarding a medical condition. Are you ready? Let's go! Hello, happy Friday. Welcome to another episode of the Friends of France podcast. And today I am bringing you the absolute tooth above the ears. You know, when <laughs> I was planning the season, I was like, I have, I have to change the titles. They can't just be like dentistry with dermatology with my friend Christina was like, you know, you should spice up the titles even more. And so I went in a whole rabbit hole for like a week trying to think of puns and funny and creative ways to title the episodes. Some I found through Google, some I got through friends, and some I'm just like sitting down in my bed looking at the wall and be like, what rhymes with this? And what works well with this specialty? Anyways, the absolute tooth about veneers. I hope you like it. Oh my gosh. We are talking about all things tooth and veneers. We are going to talk about dentistry. So in the first season of the podcast, we actually had an episode with two dentists, Dr. Tate Masanaga and Dr. Kevin Nguyen. We talked about general dentistry and emotional dentistry. We talked about the power of smiles and the ability of dentistry to restore these smiles in those who have missing teeth, in those who are conscious about their teeth or their gums. And we kind of take a figment of that for today's episode, but in a completely different direction. Today, we are talking specifically about cosmetic dentistry. Aside from the emotional aspect of dentistry, we talk about the appearance and the visuals and how it really affects someone's psyche. We talk about veneers because of a very viral TikTok video during that time when it was recorded last spring where someone's teeth was being shaved down, all of it, and people were like, oh, is this how veneers are installed? And I went to California, January of 2022, and I met with the lovely Susan Yara, skincare expert and founder of Naturium Skincare. And we were talking about how she just had a YouTube episode with cosmetic dentist Dr. Joyce Kong, who we will talk with in this episode. And we talked about veneers and how in LA, mostly, you can be walking down the street and everyone has perfect teeth. But which of those teeth are actually real? Which ones are implants? Which ones are porcelain veneers? And that's what we talked about today. But beyond veneers, we have a lot of other things to talk about. Braces versus Invisalign clear aligners, bleeding gums. Is there a time when they're ever normal or more common? Halitosis or bad breath? We all know. <laughs> and tonsil stones that I'm sure you also have seen on TikTok someone putting a Q-tip down their throat to push out those tones. Cavities. Personally, I grew up with having so many cavities. And I didn't even eat that much sweet when I was younger. So we asked Dr. Joyce today if it's true that cavities are mostly sugar derived. Is it genetic or is there another complex explanation for it? We also talk about different types of misalignments of teeth, overbite, underbite, any crooked teeth that may be irreversible. Is there any that's irreversible? We talk about turning patients away. Is there a time when a dentist would ever reject a patient's request for service or work done because it's too unrealistic or too ideal that it might harm the patient even more? I am so excited for you to listen to today's episode. Dentistry has always been a scary field for me because, again, I went to the dentist so many times growing up because of cavities, I had crowns, and oh gosh, root canals, drills, I had two teeth taken out, both of my molars, 
Hi, this is why I told everybody that I could never be a dentist, but I always love talking to dentists outside of the dental office because I learned so much about my teeth and oral health in general. Let me introduce you our guest for today, Dr. Joyce Kang, or as we know her as Joyce the Dentist Online, a doctor of dental surgery, a cosmetic dentist, and the founder of Orange and Magnolia Dental Studio in Costa Mesa, California. She has also been an assistant clinical professor in the Department of Restorative Dentistry in USC for five years, named as the next 1,000 of Forbes, top 40 dentists under 40 of Incisal Edge magazine, and featured in Huffington Post, BuzzFeed, Pop Sugar, Vice Magazine, Insider, Bustle, and Well and Good. Let's go listen to the tooth, and the tooth shall set you free. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Joyce, how are you? Good, how are you? Doing good. Thank you so much for coming on with me today. Yes, yes. Oh my gosh, I've been so excited for this. (laughs) So I think two months ago, I was in Cali and I met up with Susan, Susan Yara. And I think that was a few weeks before she uploaded the veneers video. Yeah, Yeah, so we were talking, we we talked about it and I was like, oh my gosh, I told her I have to get Dr. Joyce on (laughs) somehow, so I am so honored and grateful that I have someone who's the master in the field of dentistry here with me. So thank you, Dr. Joyce. If you can just first please introduce yourself to everybody. I'm Dr. Joyce Kong. I'm a cosmetic dentist in Orange County. I own a dental practice. So like sometimes people follow me just to know what I'm doing in my dental practice, how to grow a business. And then I share lots of dental tips on Instagram and TikTok. And recently I'm trying to grow my YouTube, which is hard. (laughs) It's very time consuming. But yeah, that's just me in a nutshell. Yeah, YouTube is a very icky place to start it. I don't know if you know Dr. Daniel Sugai. Um, I do. I do. So yeah, I manage his YouTube channel. So it's actually <laughs> been like two years of us trying to navigate how to go through it. But he recently got 100,000 followers. So I think wow. YouTube is the place to be as well, apart mm-hmm. from TikTok and Instagram. But again, thank you so much for being with us today. I am such, such a big fan of your content and all of the tips on Instagram. I'm someone who grew up with so much cavities for some reason. Uh-huh. And I actually had molar extraction. So I'm just that one kid who always had cavity issues. And and, but for some reason, dentistry has never been my mind, probably because I got so traumatized growing up going to the <laughs> dentist. So it's like, I, I can't have the manual dexterity to do that. But Dr. <laughs> Joyce, you are a dentist, been practicing for a while, and you have your own practice. But I know that the road to dentistry is not easy at all. I know at least for the United States, right, it's four years of undergrad and then four years of dental school and then you can opt to do residency in a dental specialty if you would like to. I can't imagine how long and how many sacrifices there are. So there's a student loan planner account on Instagram with a viral post recently showing that the top six professions with the highest student loans are all dentists and the seventh being physicians. With all of the money and time and effort and emotions involved, do you have any regrets going on to this field years, years later? Oh, so by the way, it's so random that you just brought that up because I just did a student loan consult with them. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> I'm So I'm 12 years in as a dentist yeah. and I still have student loan debt. But I mean, there's many ways to approach student loan debt. Do I have any regrets? Not Really? So people ask me this question all the time, but Mm. I would say that I graduated with $325,000 of student loan debt, which Mm. is not as much as what people are graduating with now. So it might be Mm. kind of like apples to oranges, but I don't have that many regrets, but that's because I love dentistry and I love practicing. However, I think it's really hard to know if you will love dentistry going into the field. Like you could have been a dental assistant, you could shadow like and have a thousand hours of shadowing, but until you're actually doing dentistry, you really don't know whether you're going to love it because it's just so different being the dentist. There's like a lot of pressures that we deal with on a day-to-day basis. Mm -hmm. Part of it's like just walking the patient through a procedure that they probably don't want to get. Like, it's not like, I always think about like, Oh, when I go get Botox and filler, those needles are really scary. And <laughs> people, mm-hmm. people still want that stuff because yeah. it's like <laughs> it enhances the way they look. But yeah. when they come yeah. to the dentist, 
I think we do a pretty good job of making sure that the needles and stuff don't hurt as much. Like we're very mm-hmm. like in with the fact that people don't want to be there. Yeah, people just don't want to be there, even if you can make it as painless as possible, because like the yeah. elements, the drilling and all that, like it's just not an enjoyable field. So there's like a lot of stress and pressure when you're a dentist. And it's really hard to say whether people will enjoy it. In the yeah. <laughs> and luckily I do. Like my husband, yeah. he's more like he sees dentistry for what it is and mm-hmm. he enjoys helping people, but like the mm-hmm. actual profession he's kind of like so <laughs> hmm, i can imagine yeah i think that passion though that like enjoyment of doing dentistry must come from somewhere what was your inspiration of going to the field was there like a family member a friend or yeah. personal experience <laughs> Yeah. I actually have so many family members who are dentists, <laughs> but it all started with my mom so my mom was mm. a dentist and then mm. i I grew up in the dental office because I would go during summers and like check insurance and like, you know, flip over rooms for her. And then all my cousins ended up becoming dentists or like somewhere in the dental field, like pediatric dentists or endodontists. Mm -hmm. And then now I have cousins that are like younger than me that are now dentists too. (laughs) So like, it's just like a big dental family. And my husband's a dentist. So (laughs) a lot of dentists. (laughs) That's like a whole empire of dentists. And I know you also <laughs> used to be uh, or are still a assistant clinical professor at USC, right? For dental school. I left that position you left. in early 2020, like right before right. the pandemic. Right before the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Got it. And so you were also like grooming the next generation of dentists. So <laughs> I guess that love of dentistry really does root from somewhere. And it's so inspiring to see. And, you know, I ask the same questions to all of my guests. I think this is our like 37th episode, I think. And I I think a few episodes ago, I was actually with two general dentists. Dr. Tate Masanago is one of them. And the question I always ask is, do you have any regrets when going to the field? And I think I tend to ask that questions to physicians and to dentists for those who have doctors because it's such a long expanse of time. And I think there's always that, oh, I'll live my life after dental school. I'll live my life when I become an attending. Did you have that mindset like while going through school that, oh, I'll live my life when I start practicing? I didn't. Yeah. Okay, so I dated a guy who was yeah. watched that mindset, but he, I don't know if he thought it was, but it's like oral <laughs> surgeon. And now, yeah, he does make a lot of good money, but it is so like oral surgery. You have to go through dental school plus medical yeah. school and yeah. like, like so grueling. He always had that mindset. I feel like sometimes you kind of need that mindset in order mm-hmm. to get through just like reminding yourself like there is a point to all this because there are so many sacrifices along the way but for me like I I think my mindset was more just like I just saw the destination like getting my dental degree yeah. and people always ask me like did you know that you wanted to own a practice or do this or that I had no idea like I didn't even think about life after dental school I was just like I mm-hmm. need to make it here otherwise I'm not making it anywhere yeah. else like I yeah. just, like, one step in front of the other as far as like regret, again, I think like if you want to make money, dentistry, I mean, there is potential, but I don't think that yeah. it's the most lucrative for the amount of time you take to get your degree. Yeah. And all. there's way more other mm-hmm. ways of money, I don't think. Yeah. Although dentistry sometimes is very glamorized on Instagram. Yeah. I think if I yeah. wanted to make money, I could make money, mm-hmm. more money elsewhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I mean, but I spent eight years of my life to yeah. do this road. Exactly. Just for the money, there's people who go into like finance or business who make much more money in like shorter amount of time. So the healthcare field is definitely a place where your visions and your desires are tested. And I think one of those times was when COVID started. Right. And I have friends who are dental hygienists and dentists as well. And when COVID was starting, all I could think of was, oh my gosh, how are the dental practices holding up? Knowing that, you know, in the beginning, it's like, oh, it's via saliva, it's via fluids. And I was like, wait, the first line of this are the dental offices. How has COVID changed your practice the past two years and at the start as well? Oh, COVID was like... That was, that was freaky in the beginning. Now it's yeah, not yeah. a really big deal. I still haven't gotten COVID, by the way. I, I feel like I should have. Um, yeah. Like everyone I know has gotten it already. And I'm just like, why haven't I gotten it? I'm supposed to be in a really high risk field. Yeah. But we closed the office for around two to three months during COVID. Mm-hmm. And like, I just, I was freaking out, not really for myself, but because I was pregnant. And mm-hmm. uh, oh, I don't, they didn't know how it would affect pregnant people yeah. or like baby yeah. and all that stuff. But I wanted to make sure that I could create kind of like a safe environment for all my employees mm-hmm. to come back to. And mm-hmm. I was like really concerned about COVID. But 
actually, I don't know if a lot of people like even know who I am or follow me on this, <laughs> this life, but I have a very small dental practice. And I find that a lot of dental practices are really big these days, like big scale. And mm-hmm. my dental practice is sort of unique. And that is very, very small. It's 644 square feet. And I only have mm-hmm. two children. So I see one patient at a time. And that was really, really valuable during COVID because we didn't have to change all that much about the way that we schedule patients. We already see a reduced flow of patients. So we cut it down even more during the first couple of months of the pandemic mm-hmm. where we'd have people sit in the car and then come in mm-hmm. one they don't even cross each other. Like it was very like, it was crazy. Yeah. But overall, it kind of reassured me that I'm doing things a good yeah. way. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so jealous of those who haven't gotten COVID yet, though, on the sideline, because <laughs> I've gotten it three times. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I, got, I got it in September 2020, um, the Alpha variant. Then I got it last summer during Delta. And then I got it early this year with the Omicron. And I was like, if I get it the fourth time, this <laughs> virus is just in love with me, most probably. But, you, you know, I... <laughs> <laughs> actually no i think it's because i got it from work as well too i don't know at this point i just think i'm genetically predisposed to it but you were talking about your clinic your practice that's quite small and cute it's orange and magnolia right in uh-huh. orange county first of all i love the name and so i feel like there's this field called cosmetic dentistry right uh-huh. and i feel like dentistry as a whole has so many assumptions about it has so many myths and stereotypes as well and i think we'll just tackle some of those here today in this live and one of the biggest topics that i wanted to touch on is veneers in a bit that i was talking with susan so when i went out with susan she was like you know you gotta wait for this video we're gonna release it in two weeks and i was like oh what is it what is it and she was like no no, no you're, you're gonna like it she said it's, it's one of the trends on tiktok and i was like you can you just tell me what it is she said okay it's about veneers and we're gonna have like dr joy speak to us about it too i was like oh my gosh I love Dr. Joyce. I said, okay, I can't wait for it. And I said, we're going to talk to her one day. Now, delving into general dentistry first, which I know your practice offers as well. I must say the amount of work you do is so amazing. I think people downplay the importance of smiles on a daily life, right? I do work in an outpatient clinic as well. And there was one time when I had a patient who had a lot of missing teeth. And when she would speak to me, she'd always speak to me like this. And like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, yeah, I was having chest pain like this. And then I noticed, oh, okay, she's trying to cover her mouth because she doesn't want me to see her missing teeth. And I think that's a root of lack of self-confidence for mm-hmm. a lot of people. And I think that's the power that dentistry holds, right? Is that you can restore people's not only smile, like physically, but also there's a whole psychosocial aspect of dentistry that people tend to not really think about in the first go is you bring back people's confidence and smiles of all of those smiles there's a lot of stories underneath that as a dentist how do you manage all of that emotional and psychosocial tolls with your patients because i can't imagine the amount of stories and the emotions that you hear and see yeah sometimes it takes me by surprise even because you know so i think the hardest part about being a cosmetic dentist is that you can envision what the teeth will look like in your head but it's really hard to relay that to the patient. And a patient, all they know is that they want a smile enhancement, but they have not yet seen what it's going to look mm-hmm. like. So it's hard mm-hmm. to break that gap and explain to them, this is what it's going to look like. It's almost like they have to trust the process. Mm-hmm. And it is really amazing when they get to the end and they see the smile, obviously, like right when they're installed. They're yeah. <laughs> you need to let them heal. But like when I see them for a follow up, like I had this one girl, she came in with like bright red lipstick and she was just like a completely different person. And so it yeah. really, it does change the way that people feel about themselves, both professionally and personally. And like just being able to smile without holding back is yeah. such a powerful thing. As far as like emotionally, I think this is why I only work three days a week is because like mm. I... Mm-hmm. I kind of absorb people's energy. And so like when I'm walking through, I want to make sure that I'm really pleasing them in the end, or like I'm really listening to the things that they Mm -hmm. want, dislike, or sometimes they don't even know, but like, I want to be respectful of that. And my mind's like always turning like, oh, if I design it this way, are they going to like this? Or like, it takes a lot out of you in order to like anyone can do a veneer, but like to satisfy somebody what they want to look like or where they're going to be happy, that takes a lot of like your mental energy. And yeah. so, yeah, I only work three days a week. I've made it a point to only yeah. work a couple of yeah. days, like 
be fresh for everybody that comes yeah. to the office. It's no longer October, but let me tell you a horror story. I was working bedside as a nurse. 12 hour shifts, 12,000 to 15,000 steps per night, always exposed to dripping blood, pee, and other fluids. And guess what? I was wearing skateboarding shoes for almost a year. Because my feet were killing me, I switched to more comfortable sneakers but had to go through three pairs because I would find new stains after shifts. And over time, as the pandemic came, I was too exhausted to think about my feet or even changing my footwear. I was then introduced to Clove, and I no longer had to do the thinking. To support the steps of those who dedicate their lives to caring for others, Clove collaborated with healthcare professionals and innovative designers to create a shoe that prioritizes the needs of those in the front line. These are sneakers designed for healthcare. They already did the thinking. Easy to clean and fluid repellent, I no longer have to worry about those red streaks or pea-soaked socks since I use the same wipes at work to remove every stain. Just this summer, one of my patients unexpectedly bled from the radial artery access site and made a pool in my brilliant whites on the floor. A few swipes with the purple wipes, all clean and with no damage. Plus being squeak free, I no longer have to worry about waking up a sleeping patient. Layered with comfort, sore toes are no longer my problem since the shoes are now upgraded with double the cushioning, 50% more arch support, and a perfect heel pad. On top of this, the grippiest outsole also allows for a fluid channel technology while maintaining super secure footing. And yes, it's 100% cruelty free and vegan. I love all of my clove shoes and I hope that you can get ready to also step into your perfect pair. Use code FRANZ, that's F-R-A-N-Z, or visit goclove.com slash friends for 15% off your first pair of clove shoes at checkout. I am no stranger to seeing patients that can't get the care they need because they can't afford it. Even if they get a medical recommendation that will help them, oftentimes, medication costs are so high it's totally out of reach, or they would have to choose between feeding their family or paying rent in order to get the medication, so people have to go without. After living through a pandemic, on some level, we all know the healthcare system in the United States is broken. That is why I am happy to see that mission-driven businesses are now taking an interest in the problem because it's not getting solved fast enough. Better Remedies is one of those companies doing something to really meaningfully help people with medical expenses, in particular, getting their medications. Better makes over-the-counter medication, think pain, gas, cough and flu, sleep, all the essentials for your medicine cabinet. For every box of Better Remedies sold, they cover the cost of someone's life-saving medication for a month. And this is someone who would otherwise have to choose between food, rent, gas to get to work, or otherwise caring for themselves or their family. It is such an easy switch to make. You get the same great relief you need for 10% less than other big name brands, and someone who doesn't have the access to their meds will get the help they need. In general, it's good to know the active ingredients you need for your symptoms rather than just buying a big name brand. It'll save you money, and because active ingredients are FDA regulated, you'll still be getting the results you need. Plus, if you buy from Better, you are also helping someone else in a big way too. It's putting your headaches, farts, and insomnia to work. And that's something we can all feel better about. I've been buying my Better Remedies products at Walmart at any time I need to stock up. And you can do the same. Everything is priced about 10% less than the big brands, works just as well, and makes an impact on something that is really important and that I am personally very passionate about. Make the switch next time you need relief. You'll feel better and be doing some good. I also tend to absorb people's energies as well, but especially for, you know, like with the outer appearance, I think there's a lot of that involved because, you know, there's wounds that we cannot see, right? Like mm. those who deal with different organs inside the body, but things like the skin and the teeth, you know, the lips or the nose, I feel like these are aspects of the physical body that's so hard to not recognize. I mean, I went through severe acne all throughout high school. So there's always that sense of, oh my gosh, people are always looking at me. People are always looking or judging how I look like. And I think many people think about that too with their teeth, right? If it's crooked, if it's misaligned, if they have mis teeth and I think that's a big power that dentistry holds is trying to restore those smiles back do you think there's ever a time when I'm asking this because I asked some cosmetic physicians as well is is there ever a time that you turn away patients who come in with unrealistic goals for like I don't know Botox or fillers is there ever a time when in a dental setting that would also be the case yeah <laughs> Yes, actually, oh my god, I just filmed a YouTube video on this. Um, <laughs> but there are definitely times like, 
Yeah. And it's not so much that I'm turning people away, yeah. but I think that there is a lot of responsibility for me yeah. to let people know that they should do things in a proper way, which when I first mm -hmm. graduated from dental school and I just wanted to start doing cases like this, it's so much, mm -hmm. it's so much harder to turn those cases away because you want to get your hands wet and you want to do the cases. Mm -hmm. But like at this point in my career, I'd rather do the cases the way that I think they should be done. Yeah. For example, if teeth are like really crooked, you can do veneers, but yeah. do you want to do veneers without straightening the teeth and putting the teeth into the proper position? Because ultimately we don't want to decimate a tooth in order for it just to look prettier. Yeah. We want to yeah. help the patient feel a bit more confident, but also do so in like the most minimally invasive way that we possibly can. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I think that there's a lot of that where it's, I tell people that they should probably do some sort of straightening thing and yeah. Total buzzkill. I know that they're going to yeah. walk out the door yeah. and go to somebody else who will do the, the treatment for them without mm -hmm. doing the line. But it is one of those things where you just have to be okay with saying bye to business because yeah. something's not appropriate and you can't sleep at night. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah, and there are inappropriate and I guess like two ideal situations, right? And I think one of that is the concept of perfect teeth. Right. Mm -hmm. I remember in, in the video collab you did with Susan, she was like, you know, you go walk around Hollywood or LA and everyone here has perfect pearly white teeth, but not all of those teeth are natural and they were born with that teeth. So we obviously have a whole dental technology of all of these things that can promote perfect teeth. As someone who has you know, I got I got a tooth out and I got cavities and I'm in the dentist often. I always hear things like braces, Invisalign. And I think with the recent buzz on TikTok is veneers, right? When would one require, let's say, implants versus braces versus Invisalign versus veneers? Oh, so those are all like really different. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. An implant would be like if you're missing a tooth. Yeah. Invisalign is, let's say that your teeth need to be straightened. Yeah. You can do Invisalign. Yeah. And a lot of times we do Invisalign as a precursor to veneers. Mm -hmm. So set up the teeth in the proper place and then also create proper bite and clearance from the bottom teeth because people mm -hmm. forget that veneers are, they're like a functional part of you. Like, yes, they're there for a show, but they also like you eat with them. And so the longevity is increased if you put them into the right place first with Invisalign. So that's Invisalign. Mm -hmm. I find that a lot of people are completely happy with just whitening and Invisalign. That's super impactful, straightening and mm -hmm. brightening. What was the last one? I think it was just braces. Because I know there's like front braces and then I think there's braces at the back now, the teeth, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's not like my field like <laughs> orthodontics, but oh, there yeah. are a lot of when it comes to braces now. And this line is just mm -hmm. one option. You can do braces, yeah. you can do brace where it's on the back. And, mm -hmm. yeah. Got it. And in the world of veneers, so I think the TikTok that we were talking about are where it's completely like gone the teeth right it's completely mm -hmm. shaved down and i know you said that oh those are not real veneers those are like total reconstruction can you talk more about that doc yes <laughs> so, <laughs> i think that the tiktok that whole thing those are full coverage crown. to the average person they're like what the heck is that so like with a full coverage crown you're drilling the tooth all the way around making it into a small little nub and then putting a crown on top like a hat on top mm -hmm. It's what people traditionally think of as caps. And yeah. there is a time and place to do crowns. Like there's nothing bad about crowns if they are actually mm -hmm. needed. So like, when would you get a crown is if you have a lot of decay or like the wall is like completely chipped a tooth or mm -hmm. whatever, if the wall is already gone or needs to go, then sometimes you do a full coverage crown. But when it comes to veneers, the thing that like hurts my heart is that I think that girl, when you see her teeth before, there's nothing wrong with them. Yeah. There's like no yeah. need drill away that much tooth structure. And ideally speaking, when we're doing veneers on somebody who has a nice smile and their teeth are pretty straight, we want to remove as little tooth structure as possible mm -hmm. because it's not bad. So even when it comes to crown preps, I would say that those preps that we're seeing in the video are over tape of like way too yeah. much drilling. And it's funny because even as a first year or second year dental student, Mm -hmm. That's one of the criteria that we will mm -hmm. grade people on. If somebody mm -hmm. makes their crown prep over tapered, that means that they got rid of tooth structure unnecessarily. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes can lead to a, a fail. That's like, mm -hmm. you got to. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's also 
matters who does do these procedures, right? These dental <laughs> procedures. Because I know you were talking in the comments about how it should be from a, someone who's trained and educated in this regard. I was saying this because I think one of the dentists that I follow to, I think Stephen Lou, uh, he posted something last week where there's accounts on Instagram where they do braces. Um, <laughs> have you seen that? And they're not, <laughs> dental, they're not in the dental fields at all. And when I saw it, I was like, Oh my gosh, this actually exists. Oh my yeah. gosh, so people were just pulling. So how, I mean, obviously you're a dentist, but how important it is for, is it for, I mean, the magnitude of these procedures for someone's mm-hmm. training, right? To be able to do this, right? Dentistry with Stephen, right? We're talking about Stephen. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I love him, by the way. He actually talk a lot about these unlicensed professionals. What yeah. he's, and what I've actually, I've posted about this too, are there are unlicensed professionals who are doing mm. like deposit veneers or braces. And it's just like insane that they have zero training. Well, I mean, training aside, they are not licensed professionals. Yeah, so they yeah, yeah. don't know how they're getting all this stuff. And I don't know how they're sterilizing everything. And I don't, yeah, yeah, it's just the crazy thing about that is that because they're not real dentists or doctors, if you go to them, you're not a patient, you're just a client. And yeah. so goes wrong like you're not yeah. real dental work whereas like if you have a qualm with a the dentist then you know that at least they're practicing at the standard of care now mm-hmm. there are a lot of general dentists we all have the same degree or like a dme yeah. or DS, but where we choose to get more training it really depends on what your desire is like there are a mm-hmm. lot of that are very good with doing ortho because they mm-hmm. got training after school to do ortho or there are general dentists that desire to do more cosmetic procedures and it's because they've learned a lot more about cosmetics and that's where they're naturally drawn as a general dentist you can do anything that you want and you can do it all or you could do very little like for me i've mm-hmm. chosen to do only very specific few procedures mm-hmm. I think it's important to train your eye and just to always do in procedures because mm-hmm. even though it seems simple on the outside, there are so many like layers to it. And I don't personally believe that you can be good at everything. That's like my yeah. own belief. But I know that there are dentists that do everything. So like at one level, there's a license. At the mm-hmm. next level, there is a degree, but yeah. then there's additional training on top of yeah. that. Yeah. And I think what also comes with all of this is the medical technology that we have, right? I feel like there's so many things now that we can do for dental procedures or even medical procedures. And I think one thing that caught my eye about your practice is and on your website says a syringe-less environment with a computer-assisted anesthesia and a metal-free environment as well. Can you talk more about it, Doc? I was like, whoa, this is so <laughs> interesting. So, I feel like those are very like branding terms, to be honest. So when you go to the dentist, I think one of the things people hate the most is a needle that comes in the syringe, like the traditional Mm -hmm. to have one at this desk, actually, (laughs) Um, (laughs) traditional syringe and the syringe is what freaks people out. I've noticed Mm -hmm. I have a computer assisted anesthesia machine and Mm -hmm. there's a needle involved with that. But the thing Mm -hmm. is, it does deliver anesthesia much more comfortably because I believe Mm -hmm. that there's things that really cause pain when you're injecting somebody and number one is like the poke the initial poke Mm -hmm. of the needle going through which can be managed with like really good gels or like topicals and then the second thing is injecting anesthesia very very slowly droplet by droplet so that it senses the resistance of the tissue which is what Mm -hmm. is doing for me can you inject Mm -hmm. really Slowly manually, yes, you can. Mm-hmm. But the machine, like, it just helps me have like a very calm, <laughs> calm yeah. mindset because it just doesn't yeah. work. Like, for example, if you were to inject the roof of your mouth with that tissue, that's like really stiff mm-hmm. tissue. This is like your cheek, <laughs> like very flimsy. There, you'd want to inject at a different pace because mm-hmm. if you inject too fast on the roof of your mouth, that's gonna hurt. So that's what the machine does for me. And again, because it's just like a really thin, it looks like a pen freak people out as much like I've even had situations where I've had like a kid and I don't see a lot of kids but like yeah. once I've put the syringe on the tray and the kid is just fixated on the syringe and getting a shot yeah. then I'll yeah. give them an injection with the other thing the wand and they won't even really realize yeah. a lot of injections they're mental it doesn't hurt that much yeah, it's yeah. if you can manage people's mental state then you're golden as far yeah. as like metal free i don't really do any amalgam fillings at this point and i do do much when it comes to like the old school traditional pfms Mm -hmm. not that there's anything really wrong with them but i've just chosen not to i think they're I'm the place for traditional Mm -hmm. solar fillings i have a traditional solar filling me too (laughs) i have one too 
I have them I there, have, yeah. I have one. I don't think there's anything wrong with them. It's just that I, I love adhesive dentistry. And so that's how I practice is I like doing composite fillings and like sculpting it and making it look like mm -hmm. the rest of the tooth and making it pretty. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with the injections are mostly like mental. I mean, even when I did like vaccinations or stuff, I mean, the people are ready to pass out just at the sight of the needles. I mean, there's also like really painful situations though, especially in, in dentistry. Like when I got my tooth extracted, I was like, oh my gosh, this is the most painful injection ever because I feel like it's getting into the bone. I was like, oh my gosh, what is going on? But yeah, and I mean, it's just amazing how much technology that we have now, right? It's probably not when you were also in dental school, right? There's probably so many new things as well. I think it's newer. Technology is really cool and it, if you can utilize it properly. And the reason why I think a lot of dentists don't carry, why don't all dentists mm -hmm. have it's because it's expensive, first of all, <laughs> for the yeah. machine, but also for each needle, those are additional costs on your procedures that I don't pass forward to the patient. I absorb that mm -hmm. cost because I think that it's worth the comfort. But second mm -hmm. of all, it takes time to deliver anesthesia droplet by droplet by droplet. So ultimately, the most important thing I do is actually not the machine. It's the fact that in my treatment procedure, I block out a fair amount of time to properly anesthetize a patient. Mm -hmm. because I is the most important thing yeah. and if you're trying to like speed through it it's gonna hurt no matter what it doesn't yeah. matter if you're using the wand or i'm not using yeah. the wand it's gonna hurt but the time so that's why i'm always like patience you got to be on time to your appointment because if you are running late you're giving the dentist less time to do their procedure mm -hmm. and give them yeah. less space to mm -hmm. properly anesthetize you in a painless <laughs> in a yeah. painless most comfortable yeah. way possible yeah i also can't imagine how it is for children right i know you said that you don't really see children right i mean <laughs> when i see when i see john use videos i was like how does he do this like i was like i'll probably lose patience <laughs> i don't know the kids i mean they're cute but you know i yeah i mean that's why thankfully for new medical devices and new medical technologies as well so we talked about the new years and i think that's one thing that many people really had questions about because of i guess what they saw on tiktok but the world of dentistry, again, has still so many different myths and lack of understanding in certain topics. You know, we see a lot of blog posts or forums where they say, oh, this is better, this is better, this is good, or this is good. So people have sent in some questions, um, just a few. It's okay if we can just go through them. And yeah. as the master of the arts, I think one of the biggest ones was do widening strips work i know in dental offices you offer actual widening but do you think at home widening strips work well oh my god i just did a youtube video on this <laughs> dr joyce am i reading your mind <laughs> so it's called do crest whitening strips work mm. i always get about crest whitening strips do whitening strips work yes but do they work on everybody equally no i think that a lot of people ask me about whitening products because they're like, oh, is this a good whitening product? Because yeah. they think like it's about the whitening product. It's less mm. about the whitening product. It's more about the patient. And that's why mm. it's hard to say yes or no, it works or whatever, because yeah. some people, they're just a little bit more resistant to teeth whitening than other people. Like some people you put a, a strip on and they're super bright afterwards, like kudos to you because you're lucky. Mm. Some people like, especially if you have like those translucent areas of your tooth, it, your teeth mm -hmm. just don't end up brighter even though they are yeah. whiter but they're yeah. it, it doesn't give off that look so i do think crest white strips are a good place to start with your teeth mm -hmm. whitening journey because it is affordable it's easy to get it's mm -hmm. easy to use and it does work it works for especially i would say teenagers where mm -hmm. they have a lot of stains into their teeth and their teeth mm -hmm. are like nice and fresh the concentration of crest white strips like six to seven percent hydrogen peroxide or sometimes you can get up to like ten percent which is mm -hmm. pretty over-the-counter product whereas if you do in-office whitening you're going to get around 35 to 40 percent so it's kind of as simple as that where the okay. concentration of the active ingredient makes a big difference if you're not getting a lot of results with crest white strips then you may need to go to something stronger mm -hmm. got it and i think this also roots from a question that i've seen for many years now is is yellow teeth inherently normal or healthy like Yes, whitening strips work. You can get whitening in dental offices. But do you think it's necessary for people to do that? Is there harm no. if you, someone's <laughs> teeth are usually yellow? I also get this question a lot from people who are like, do you think I should whiten my teeth? I'm like, yeah. it's not up to me. Like, if, if you <laughs> want 
if you want whiter teeth, then do it. So I think the reason people gravitate towards veneers or white teeth is because mm. that is societal expectation of what health looks like. And to mm. a certain degree, yes, if you have bright teeth, it means that you take good care of them and you have good mm. oral health. So I do understand that. But like, if your teeth are naturally more on the yellow side, you don't need to whiten them. Like mm-hmm. you honestly just leave them be if it doesn't bother you. And I have tons of patients where they just leave their teeth. And as a cosmetic dentist, that's where you kind of have to like respect what people desire for themselves. Because even though you yeah. know you can fix everything, you don't need to fix everything if people are perfectly yeah. fit. Yeah, got it. And I think a second question that people also have sent in is, is there ever a time when bleeding gums are normal or not worrisome? Ooh, this is a good one. <laughs> well, <laughs> I would say bleeding gums are not normal. It's kind of like, mm-hmm. you know that there's inflammation in your gums if you're bleeding mm-hmm. or something going on. But whenever I take measurements of gums, so the way, so I don't know if people really know that much about bleeding gums. I feel like mm-hmm. every time I video on bleeding gums people are like oh my god what so i think bleeding gums it just means that there, there's inflammation there could be something stuck underneath the gum like if you got mm-hmm. a pump or something stuck underneath there then it'll cause inflammation of the gum there could just be like bacteria or plaque that you really can't even see and it, it may not be like a substance but basically you have to clean all that off in order mm-hmm. to get the inflammation to shrink back down it's kind of like having a splinter i don't know if you've heard me say this before but it's ha- like having a splinter unless yeah. you remove bacteria or the splinter from underneath your skin, it's going to be inflamed and raised. Mm -hmm. So that's why gums bleed is because it's inflamed. And we don't like inflammation anywhere in the body, right? Especially, Mm -hmm. it should be, especially with your gums. With your gums, when is it kind of normal to have bleeding? I would say it's never normal. However, I notice some people bleed more if they're pregnant or Mm -hmm. if they're Mm -hmm. married, something hormonal. I also notice that people bleed more if they have like a really bad restoration <laughs> underneath the gum mm-hmm. really really deep so those two i think are the most common times i see bleeding that that i'll be like oh i get it you're you're on your period or something like that got it, got it. is the breath smell ever an indicator of health <laughs> is it not like this bad breath automatically mean that there's something wrong like an ongoing <laughs> bad breath Bad breath could be so many different things. Yeah. It could just mean that you eat a lot of stinky food. <laughs> mm, got it. Coffee, wine, yeah, alcohol, smoking, all those things make mm-hmm. you smell. And mm-hmm. even if you brush and floss and do all the good mm-hmm. oral hygiene, you really can't outrun a bad diet. Mm-hmm. It could also have something going on gastrointestinally. So yeah. it's like hard to say. But as far as like your mouth, Bad breath can come from a few things. Like, for example, mm-hmm. if you have a wisdom tooth back there that's partially corrupted and there's like a flap of gum where you get food stuck in there, it's mm-hmm. always going to smell. It doesn't matter if you're brushing your teeth, it's always going to smell <laughs> until you yeah. get rid of that pocket. Tonsil stones, you could have mm-hmm. bad tonsil stones. Those are really- a big one on, on TikTok too, right? When they were putting the, they were like trying to take it out. Yeah. Oh, I'm so obsessed with those videos. Like I watch them <laughs> all the time just for fun. <laughs> Me too. When they put like the the cotton swab, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is so cool!" Yeah, yeah. and um, had tonsil stones, so I always find it fascinating. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Oh my gosh, this this is this is for real." And I think uh, one question that another person sent was about cavities. Is there a very high genetic indicator of cavities? Because they asked, "I eat a lot of sweets and I get cavities, but there's people who eat tons of more sweets, but they don't get cavities as, at all." It is a lot more complex than we make it out to be. I think as dentists, we always say, oh, you just need a bread with laws and you spoil toothpaste. But that's why I think it's important to individualize your care for each mm. person. Some people are more cavity prone. That's like the truth of the matter. And mm-hmm. I'm actually one of those people like you. I had I have mm-hmm. filling on literally every single tooth, like back tooth. And it's because... Yeah. Did I eat a lot of sweets when I was little? Like, I think we always think, oh, it's because that person ate too many sweets. Mm-hmm. But it always comes back to the bacteria. So when we're born, we're actually not born with the bacteria that causes cavities. That bacteria mm-hmm. is within the first, like, four years of life. And that's why I did another video on TikTok that went, like, absolutely crazy yeah. uh, where I said, I'm a new mom and I don't I don't kiss my baby on the lips. And so people were just going crazy. Mm-hmm. and. As I don't want to transfer my bacteria, I've always yeah. had some 
cavities and yeah. I don't want to transfer that to Preston. I want him to be yeah. like low in that bacteria that causes cavities. And the only reason I know that I have that bacteria is not because I have cavities. It's because I swabbed my mouth in dental school. We grew it on a Petri dish and like my Petri dish exploded. Whereas like all my friends that have never had cavities, they barely have any of that bacteria. You can imagine if you have a lot of that bacteria, it's an uphill battle. If you have really good oral hygiene, even if you brush and floss and all that, mm -hmm. you can still get cavities because you're a little bit more prone than somebody else. Having worked as a nurse in cardiac surgery recovery and outpatient interventional cardiology, I learned that listening is a vital part of the field. But beyond listening to what patients say, it's also important to hear what they don't say. And many times, you can hear this in the stillness and quietness of the room as their chest thumps and rhythms that can range from normalcy to urgency. A person's heartbeat is not only a sign of life, but also a sign of its quality. According to the CDC, arrhythmias, or abnormal heart sounds, have an expected prevalence of about 1.5% in the general population, with atrial fibrillation being the most common. This is why it is so important that we can adequately hear and detect heart and even lung sounds that may be detrimental to human life. ECHO provides smart digital stethoscopes, such as the 3M Letman Core Digital Stethoscope, that help you check for signs of heart and lung disease in seconds during physical exams with unprecedented enhanced stethoscope sound and automated detection. This is all through a quick pairing with your mobile device. This is made possible by features such as having up to 40 times amplification, active noise cancellation, wireless listening, auto-triggered heart murmur and atrial fibrillation detection, and real-time visualization of sound and ECG that you can share as a consult with a trusted colleague or specialist. Every patient encounter deserves exceptional care. Hear clearly and care confidently with ECHO. The virtual space is flooded with so many different brands, resources, and gears made for healthcare workers from all disciplines. From scrubs to pins and even compression socks, it can truly get overwhelming trying to find the best product fit for you. Links to these items can get lost, and the list can get so long that you forget what you actually needed to purchase for your next work shift. This is why I am so grateful to partner with Lumify, the community marketplace for healthcare workers all in one app. Finding the brands you love, discovering new tools, and accessing your resources and communities shouldn't be difficult. Instead of going to 50 different websites to access what you need, you can find it all on Lumify, where over 200 brands, organizations, and resources are united with one goal, to support healthcare workers. As a nurse-founded company, Lumify believes that all healthcare professionals deserve a trusting and supportive community of their peers. In Lumify, you can easily communicate with your peers to trade advice, share product recommendations, and discuss what resources are best to support you. You can even earn Lumify points on every purchase you complete, which you can save for product discounts. Whether it's mental health resources, or fluid-resistant shoes, hi Chloe, or stethoscopes, hi Echo, or podcasts, welcome to Friends of France, Lumify is trusted by over 75,000 healthcare professionals at the bedside and beyond, including myself. Enter this new healthcare ecosystem where you can get 10% off using the code LUMIFYFRANZ, that's L-U-M-I-F-Y-F-R-A-N-Z, at LUMIFYCARE.com, or the Lumify app available for download on iOS devices. It's a one-stop shop, and I hope you drop by! As a dentist, what is the ideal, you know, we have ideal skin care. What is the ideal mouth care for you? Like for someone on their day-to-day -day basis, what are the minimum things that one needs for a healthy mouth? And I think people are asking because there's videos, I don't know if you've seen this on TikTok, where, you know, there's 20-step Korean skincare routine, and then there, there's like 500-step teeth routine where they put like a strip and they leave it and they put the light and they leave it and they brush their teeth and they do something else. So what do you think is the ideal mouth care for a day-to-day -day basis? I've seen that video. Yeah. <laughs> like swallows everything, right? Yeah. Uh, so I've seen that video. So there is a difference between ideal versus minimal. And I, I think it's very much like skincare. I think like you know, dentistry somehow became the, the redheaded stepchild of, of beauty, <laughs> but yeah. it's very much like skincare where you could do a lot. You could do 20 steps mm -hmm. in Korean skincare, or you yeah. could do just the bare minimum. And it really depends on your problems. Like if you're trying to combat aging or acne or whatever, so you customize it to you. If I were to be mm -hmm. like super, super extra and tell you my like ultimate 
ultimate oral hygiene care that you would think I'm super, super crazy, then this is how it would go. (laughs) I first use a water pick and then Mm -hmm. go over my whole mouth with a water pick. And then I would do flossing and then I would do mouthwash, an alkaline mouthwash. Mm -hmm. Then I would brush my teeth with a high fluoride toothpaste. Then I would floss one more time to get that Mm -hmm. high fluoride Mm -hmm. trait in between the teeth. And then I would Mm -hmm. scrape my tongue and that would be the end of my oral hygiene that's like ultra extra but let's say that i'm going on vacation mm-hmm. and bring like all these extra tools i would just bring it mm-hmm. back down to string floss a high fluoride toothpaste and an electric toothbrush yeah. that's that's like the bare minimum for me and mm-hmm. if you're not cavity prone you don't need to use a high fluoride toothpaste like i do i'm just mm-hmm. like i'm cavities or i mean used to i i haven't in a long time i'm prone to it yeah I haven't had oh, cavity. I a lot of tongue scraper. Tongue scraper. Okay. So is it absolutely necessary? It's actually one of the big questions that I got to is about the tongue scraper. Is it just enough that people just brush their tongue? People, Yeah, you can brush your tongue if you want. But mm-hmm. I find that people who brush their tongue can't get as far back on the tongue. Mm-hmm. To that mm-hmm. odor causing bacteria. And also, mm-hmm. tongue always touches that dangly thing over there that causes people <laughs> to tag. <laughs> so I think a tongue scraper is way better. I like the Dr. Tongue's tongue scraper because it's mm-hmm. like the proper width and the proper like mm-hmm. arch to get mm-hmm. back there. I love tongue scraping. Like, oh my gosh, after I drink red wine, if you tongue scrape after you drink red wine, you'll see all mm-hmm. the red coming off your tongue. And you're like, how did I go to sleep with all this stuff on my tongue without tongue scraping for this long? Got it. Someone said the tongue scraper has changed my life. And these are questions that people have. And most of the time, sadly, information comes from blog posts and blog sites who always try to criminalize certain mouth practices, right? Mouth care practices. Mm-hmm. And so people are scared to do certain things or they don't think some things are necessary because it's coming from those who are not educated and, and trained in these topics. And I think one of the last questions I want to ask you is, mm-hmm. as someone who has a presence on social media, how has it been trying to balance that with the world of dentistry? Does it make it stressful or more fun for you? Oh, I mean, it's so fun for me. But going back to what you just said about professionals, I think that there's yeah. actually so much misinformation at this point that yeah. when I TikTok videos, people come after me. Like people are, people, <laughs> people think like I have like some hidden agenda or I'm selling yeah. something. I'm not making any money by sharing this, but people have a very big distrust towards dentists, I find, especially Mm -hmm. the generation that has so much like information in their hands and they Mm -hmm. don't to filter where they're getting it from. They don't know if it's a verified source. It's so crazy because people who are not verified sources of information or not true professionals, they are the most convincing. They, for some reason, have like 10 out of 10 confidence the way that they talk. Yeah believe that <laughs> and they have so much followers oh my goodness Absolutely. they have so much they have so much followers and their followers will go after you in your comments when you post something and they'll be like oh these are quack dentists these are quack doctors i'm like oh my goodness the power of misinformation is super strong online but thankfully that we have people like you who try to shed light and all of that i guess that's why it's fun for you right to be on social media as well i mean it's not fun to be like attacked <laughs> well, not, not to be disparaged yet but <laughs> there you need to go wherever you're getting attacked yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's where you're needed the- i mean i feel like tiktok comments and sometimes instagram comments are <laughs> the place to be if you want to <laughs> see some misinformation and i, I think so much from those comments honestly <laughs> i can't imagine and i guess as someone who like studied and trained for this for so long i can't imagine how much frustration you also feel when you read some of these <laughs> comments too right it's like oh no that's not true i mean the audacity of some people to be like oh that's not right that's incorrect. I was like, you're telling an actual <laughs> dentist, you're telling an actual doctor. And I think social media is a big part of our lives now, right? And not just in our daily lives, but even in our professions, especially in healthcare. And I, I feel like this is also something with the next generation of dentists and doctors will go through. As someone who as a practice owner and who's practicing for a while now and also on social media, what do you think is the biggest piece of advice you could give to the next generation of dentists, whether pre-dental students or dental students, those in training or are aspiring to become dentists? What's your advice to navigate all of this? 
social media and the profession. I think one of the biggest things I've learned from being on social media is not to rely or bank so much on my credentials because I think as doctors... Mm -hmm traditional fashion, we like demand a respect because we are doctors or because we have a title. But mm -hmm. on social media, I've kind of like shed that whole like doctor persona. I think the best way to communicate and to like really connect with people is just like as a person. And mm -hmm. so although my handle is Joyce the Dentist, I could have made it like Dr. Joyce Kong or whatever. I just yeah. did Joyce the Dentist. So it's almost like we're friends and I'm just telling yeah. you like as a dentist and I want to earn people's trust, even though I guess traditionally we should have it because we're doctors, mm -hmm. but it is important to be consistent with your messaging, with what brands you work with. If you do work mm -hmm. with really like always make sure that the information that you're saying is it has evidence behind it and yeah. it'll put people in a better place and it's value driven. Yeah, got it. And that's beautiful, by the way. I, I agree with that completely. We talked about the emotional toss that goes into this profession, especially someone who is a dentist. You are in charge of these people's care. Right. And I can't imagine how stressful it is. You're managing people's, again, care and lives and also their self-confidence and all the psychosocial aspect of it. How do you decompress out of work from all of this? I mean, I know you have a very cute <laughs> baby, but how do you decompress from all of this? So I think when I first started my career, I didn't know how to decompress because well, it's harder to decompress when you're loading way too much on your plate. So yeah. I was saying I now work three days a week clinically because yeah. after 12 years, I realized I want this to be a profession that has longevity mm. and I'm not it to like quickly make just work like crazy and make money just for two years, yeah. you know, it'd be a long-term thing. And part of that is like only working three days because that's my emotional capacity. But I also yeah. do, I do therapy once a month. Yeah. I like watching real, I mean, I love watching reality. <laughs> television like being a vegetable and like sitting on my couch and yeah I, I think Gary Vaynerchuk says you don't want a life where you have to like escape all of the time but mm -hmm. when you're working with people emotionally like when I'm working on social media stuff I don't necessarily find the need to decompress mm -hmm. like that but when I'm working with people's emotions I do find the need to like sometimes just like disconnect my mind yeah. so that's and I love drinking wine. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I can tell because we've been talking about wine since earlier too. I mean, I love it. Doc Joyce, it is such an honor to have had a conversation with you. And thank you so much for spending the hour with me. I mean, I've been I've been so excited for this. I told Susan earlier, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm so nervous. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, we talked about a lot of stuff and I, I have learned so much and I have learned a lot about you. So Dr. Joyce, thank you so much for giving me your time. and Thank you for joining us and everybody for joining us as well. Thank you, thank you for having okay, me. Bye. Bye. We have now reached the end of the story. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Friends of France. I hope you had an enjoyable adventure learning about our expert guest, their work, and why they do the things that they do. Please check out the rest of the series available on all podcast platforms. Please also consider following the podcast on the platform that you prefer. Turn on the alerts for new episodes so you don't miss new stories. And give us a rating to support the show. You can find more updates on the podcast's official Instagram at Friends of France Pod or my personal Instagram at Chris Franz. That's without the I because there is no I in team. <laughs> I'm kidding. Someone already took the username. Have a great day or night, everybody. Bye.